Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In this episode I hope to test a few things. First of all, in episodes back, a long time ago actually, I thought about whether it would be possible to put something into a one-year orbit around Earth. Uh, in the game, of course. And of course that would be the equivalent of a Lagrange point. Uh, basically balancing it uh, between the gravitational pull of the Sun and the Earth. Though there is no possibility of actually using Lagrange point in this game because the game only calculates the influence of one central body at a time. So yeah, I was wondering whether it would be possible to put something into a one-year orbit to simulate a Lagrange point. And that is one, that's one thing that we're going to be testing today. I have not tried that out before. It might just go horribly wrong and we end up in the escape trajectory or something like that. But we'll see. Uh, another thing I needed to test is a new launcher. Because we want to get uh, Kerbals over to Mars, at least on a flyby mission first. And so I need to test a new launcher for that. Uh, unfortunately, uh, because I can't use remote tech, I'm going to be testing the launcher manned which is generally not a thing to do but and of course not according to my standard operating procedures but uh, here we are <laughs> so I am going to be testing it manned and what I decided to do was to create basically a Russian version of the SLS and so what we have here is a five of the engines that originally powered the core stage of the Energia rocket which would have carried well which did carry the Buran and so we've got five of those down here. And we also have the boosters. We have only two of the boosters. The energy used four as opposed to the SSM, uh, the Space Shuttle's uh, two. But I've decided to go with two here uh, because I don't need four. Uh, really don't need four right now. I will add more if we need them. But uh, so uh, the Zenit Energy Liquid Boosters here. Uh, and you can see the details. They feature an RD. 170 engines, so they're liquid, liquid boosters, and they throttle, which is very important in this case actually, because we do get up to some high, high numbers here. So both the both the engines here, the core engines and the boosters throttle, lovely stuff. Uh, and even more interesting is how quickly this thing can get off the ground and into space. Uh, you can see that the delta v to get to orbit. Uh, exists within five minutes worth of actual burn time and this is probably the fastest rocket to orbit that I've ever constructed uh, outside of stock obviously I mean to in so this is that's that's a thing I'm very nervous about and now we are we are going to be throttling them down so it'll probably take like six minutes um, simulation time probably longer real time obviously because of the physics delay um, to get to orbit but this is pretty serious stuff as far as uh, thrust to weight ratio is concerned and yeah I've never done anything like this before so that's going to be something now this is like I said manned and so we ha now in terms of capsules I don't have much of a choice here I've got this little guy and and the Freya and that's about it the Freya carries six people and it looks like that and that's not really the kind of thing to use on this. By the way, uh, this sizing was constrained. Apparently, something, some config uh, limits me to six meters on the fairings, the interstage fairings in uh, procedural fairings, uh, at this stage of technology, of course. So it's because I'm at a low stage of technology that I have a limit there, which actually uh, determined the shape of all of this. Uh, this tank is just eight. Eight meters straight. It's not. Uh, it's not the the same as the the SLS, which is 8.4. I decided to go with eight, mainly because of the boosters. I I don't think it's a good idea to have the boosters extending past the height of this portion, and so it, it was better just to limit the diameter like that. Okay, uh, we've got separation boosters as you can see, and then in here, lots of other things that were interesting so this is uh, what I've called the Adams spacecraft uh, named after Douglas Adams of course continuing my pattern of naming the actual spacecraft after sci-fi writers and there is actually an Adams lander I actually started building an Adams lander for Phobos Deimos kind of landings 
and uh, but adapted it for this mission into the Atom spacecraft. So as you can see, it uses these nifty little radial, well, are actually vernier thrusters uh, used in the Cyclone rocket, RD-856. And they burn UDMH N204, pretty standard stuff, igniting infinite times, nice vectoring range, no throttling though. Okay, so that's good. Uh, we've got the half-sized RCS ports all over the place, an RCS belt here, if you'd like. And here I had to use the NK-43. Uh, and I say had to because the NK-43 uh, has multiple ignitions. And the other candidate engines were this RD-0210. And that does not have multiple ignitions. It only ignites for one time. And we have to be able to sort of, well, we have to be able to adjust our orbit a little bit more than that. And so... That was why the NK-43 was necessary. If we're trying to get into a at least semi-circular one-year orbit, we'll need to relight the engine, and so there's that. The RCS will hopefully help with settling the fuel down. Um, other than that, yeah, uh, also fortunately it has throttling, so even though we get to pretty high thrust-to-weight ratios here, uh, it throttles reasonably deeply uh, to about 50% of its full power, so the maximum the maximum uh, thrust weight ratio I expect is about 4.5, which is a little bit high for a crewed mission, but it's acceptable in space, I think. Anyway, uh, the single Kerbal we'll put on this has to be a very adventurous type, no matter what you do, right? I mean, when you take a look at that tiny little capsule atop this huge rocket, I suppose the little guy is going to be... Oh, I should put some struts, shouldn't I? Always good to put some struts in. I don't entirely... Uh, the the fairings tend uh, are supposed to auto strut, but I'm not always sure that that works out quite right. Okay, so... I think that's the best part of these things spoken for. Anything else? There's a lot of... Uh, fiddly bits on this one. Oh, the, th the thrust plate. Uh, I think the thrust plate that I have is either limited or didn't fit very well. Uh, this, where, where is it? Uh, this thrust plate multi-adapter, I think it's limited right now due to technology. So I, I use this one, which is uh, being tweak scaled up, which causes uh, attachment point issues occasionally. So we've got that going for us in addition to everything else. So it looks a little bit odd. I really should put some fairings on here to smooth it out, but there's that. I'm sure I'm forgetting something weird about this craft. Oh yes, the launch escape system. I couldn't put a launch escape system of any kind. Um, that was a problem. Uh, first of all, obviously the preset ones are too big here. That's... yeah, no. Uh, so, couldn't do that, and then, uh, of course, you would expect me to go for solid rocket boosters. I don't have any that are small enough. Uh, these retro rockets, which were a strong candidate, are too heavy and produce too much thrust. They uh, end up uh, pulling the capsule away with a TWR of uh, 30, 30, which is uh, not not good, actually. Uh, even if you're really gung-ho about these launch escape system things, uh, 30 is a little bit heavy. So what you would think is, uh, well, procedural real fuels SRBs. Yeah, but I can't tweak, tweak scale them down to less than one meter diameter now. Now, in the earlier part of the series, you saw me do that, but apparently the update to procedural parts uh, limits them by tech and so now I don't have the ability to make really small SRBs. So uh, there is, I, I tried maybe uh, using uh, liquid engines and stuff like that it just wouldn't work out right. So we don't have a launch escape system and I'm testing this rocket for the first time manned. You can imagine how reluctant I am trying to take this out to the launch pad and of course we've got the heavy thrust weight ratio. On the bright side uh, it carries much more than 5% of its uh, liftoff weight into orbit, so that is a huge plus. I like that about it. But everything else, well, we'll have to see. Alright, well, 
Uh, no more delay. Let's pick our pick our victim. Unfortunately, and it won't be Jeb. I've recently killed Jeb in another series, the Colonization series, so I'm gonna pass on him. Um, well, I think Harden Kerman has a profile. All right, let's go go for this and see. Our aim is to get into a one-year orbit around Earth, and and part of the goal is to see if we can if we can uh, have a Kerbal survive in orbit for an extended period of time. After all, if we're going to go to Mars, we need to be able to keep our Kerbals alive for for quite a while. All right, out to the launch pad. Well, what can I say? It's an odd-looking rocket, given the tiny capsule at the top. I can't do anything about that. Already explained why. I named it the Colossus, by the way. And one one option is actually there. I originally put a second stage on here. Uh, making the first stage slightly smaller and it, it was a second stage with just one of these engines even though I'm not entirely sure they are capable of being lit in uh, in the atmosphere or on the way up I put or in orbit for that matter um, I put another one there that that dramatically increases the capacity of this rocket right now we're we're talking about maybe 80 to 90 tons to orbit and uh, adding another stage there makes it much more powerful. But uh, for and it looks better too, obviously. But for now, we're going with this, even though it doesn't look all that great. Certainly, for Mars mission, we'll definitely have that uh, extra stage, and that'll probably be. Well, I might have to use NK43s instead of these engines because we'll have to have it uh, help out to get us into orbit and then also boost us on our way to Mars. Okay, we are launching out of Baikonur. Uh, no particular need to get into a special orbit, so I'm not timing the inclination. I have tried to make sure it's daylight, obviously. Uh, if you're not in any particular need to rendezvous with anything, that helps. And we aren't, really. So, yeah. Alright, enough uh, stalling. I'll talk about everything else on the way up. Let's see if this thing can get off the ground properly. And I better be quick with the commands, because otherwise it's going to going to be higher than I expect it to be. Alright, Harden. Here we go. Oh, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to throttle down to half. Just for now because I don't want it shaking around too much. With these big rockets, when you light them, sometimes they shake quite a lot. Okay, here we go. Okay, looks good. Oh, wow, our, our launch clamps are wrong. Okay. Wow, it's been a while since I've heard Chatterer in this. Up we go. Gonna execute uh, 88 here, actually, right away. And I think roll 90, given the way I was in the BAB, is correct. Okay, 85. Again, taking this a lot faster than than any other rocket I've brought up. Oh yeah, I didn't really talk about supplies. We have 340 days worth of supplies there. You probably saw the ring of of uh, life support there, and yeah, that's that's there for a reason. So Harden is not going to be short on food, water, and oxygen for for his trip. We aren't going to keep him in orbit for the whole year. We're going to bring him back down, sure that. Oh, I haven't gone to 70 yet. Go to 70. Actually, a little bit later than I was planning on. So, the tricky part is getting through 30 to 40 kilometers where there's deadly re entry causing heating problems pot potentially, and, and we don't have a procedural nose cone or anything like that. That's a parachute at the front there. And of course the capsule itself. Prior to booster separation, we will be throttling down to limit G-forces. 
This is going great so far. Gotta say. I'm not gonna go for 45 just yet. The prograde vector hasn't caught up. I think I'm gonna begin throttle down here. Remember, everything throttles, so we don't need to throttle down too far. You can see the current acceleration compared to max acceleration. Quite a quite a good throttling ability here. Really, uh, if I wasn't trying to follow the prograde vector, I, I probably should have started gravity gravity not gravity turn pitch program a lot earlier, because uh, I, I'm just trying to stay close to prograde vector here but we really should be even lower than this right now probably more like 25 and probably let me let me deviate from prograde right now because I don't think we need to be this this high in pitch oh I still need to fix the clouds don't I I know I went on I think I accidentally replaced uh, environmental visual enhancements and uh, forgot to fix the cloud config. So yeah, you might wonder why I decided to go with the Russian engines on this one. And that's because I don't have large engines from uh, anyone else. For some reason I've got all the large Russian engines from the Bobcat Soviet engine pack, but uh, you know. I don't have the F1 or even the space shuttle main engines yet, so made sense. I simply to build a big rocket, best to use uh, best to use the big engines. Bit of a wiggliness here. Might want to throttle back down again eventually. I don't know if it's continuously throttleable or if it's just point to point. Whether they just go from full power to their the minimal power on this engine or whether it's actually just uh, it's fully throttleable it can go anywhere in between don't know that yeah I really gotta fix those clouds okay we are approaching quite a low orbit but frankly for the first flight of a new rocket I, I think it's gone pretty well I need to pitch down. It's gonna be high on the Apoapsis side. Ooh, that's okay. And there's a limit. We can't have a periapsis higher than 154. I'll take this. Okay. So. Oh, they're still twitching. That's not great. Okay, but uh, let's separate here. Right. And maybe a bit of a... I don't have any reaction wheels on this, so it's gonna be... It's gonna be uh, RCS anyway. Uh, oh, uh, let's turn that off. That's gonna be horrible. Just bring me forward. Ah, at least these fairings aren't colliding with anything. I hope. Could randomly decide that it's collidable. Not really, but I hope it can. Now it might seem that we're using a lot of RCS and we're certainly using more than I'd like, but actually it's uh, they're, they're tiny little thrusters. They're only half sized, so it's not too bad. You can see it, they're all configured to UDMH N204 and you can see the drain there. Well, this is not the most elegant uh, parting I could think of. Could have spin the whole thing up like some people have suggested, but anyway, let's talk about uh, resources while we're at. Uh, there is a procedural 
uh, life support tank in the middle there too in addition to these hex cans that uh, helps out so this whole portion is all life support here okay well now time to see if this thing is possible well, let's wait a little while all I want to do is see if a one-year orbit is possible I don't care about the orientation just yet just seeing if it's possible We'll definitely need to go past the orbit of the moon, and should be able to, right? Because, well, the moon has an orbit there. Okay, we've got a very highly inclined orbit, which, no problem, actually. Okay. Looks like that's 69 days before it starts going. Let's see if we can't go a little bit further than that. Okay, just before escape. Now I could have calculated it out and seen, based on the spheres of influence and all that, whether this was possible, but I thought that maybe actually testing out would be more interesting. It looks like the highest we can do... Maybe that's because it's not circular. Will we get better results if it's circular, or... Elliptical. Uh, will we have the effective situation of like a... Well, I mean, if it's elliptical, it's not really the same thing, is it? But maybe we should test elliptical 2. Alright, well, let's, let's try a very, very elongated orbit first. Okay, now our spacecraft is legitimately away. Let's say node... Well, you know what? Uh, it really doesn't have to be the node. Prograde will be sufficient. And I'll let Smart ASS do its thing with the thrusters. Even though it likes to fire in all directions at the same time. Got 8,425 delta V. We're not short of that, that's for sure. Okay. Right. Looks like we're lined up. There's no particular reason... I don't know if uh, it would be more likely to hit a one-year orbit in some orientation rather than another. I don't think so. Well, I don't want to hit the moon, so... Oh, call me crazy, but I'm going to try this out like this. Mainly this is a test of the actual spacecraft and all the systems, honestly. And, of course, because I haven't brought a Kerbal up in a long time, I certainly don't want to... Uh, come back around for my periapsis so all right let's let's go with this and uh, how's fuel very stable okay oh it's like that well okay that's fine too all right light okay up we go Now this thing has a huge acceleration right now, and I'm going to have to throttle down quite significantly. That's a good looking vessel, I have to say. Mounted on the rocket as it was, it wasn't particularly great, but right now it's looking good. I want to separate that out. We are obviously planning to return Hardin Kerman. And in fact, a lot of the spacecraft's own fuel is meant to just slow him down on return. Uh, let's cut there. What does that look like? Pretty far out. I'm not going to relight the 
engine. What I'm going to do is use RCS to pull me forward. Let's see how fast that goes. Okay, well, let, let's hold on to that. Let me see. What happens if I circularize here? Again, could calculate it out. I'm just going to try it. I could have figured out exactly what the... Wow, this is actually... No, there, there can't be a... Don't tell me there's any sort of possibility of a intersect with the moon. That would be crazy. Well, 62 days. Up. Doesn't seem quite out of apoapsis, is it? No. Okay. Right, well, let's see what happens if I do that. Okay, so... Adam's spacecraft on its booster. NK-43 booster. Heading out. Plenty of food, water, and oxygen. Not enough for a Mars journey, obviously, but for this sort of thing, sure. Okay. RCS on. Let's. Mine Smart ASS to guess prograde. Now you see if uh, if it ends up taking if we end up actually making a one-year orbit it might take uh, half a year to get to the other side and so we have enough we have enough supplies for that if necessary let's see how's fuel very stable wow that is lucky wonder why there's four different jettisons there I still wonder about that okay Ah, the solar panels are angled a little bit wrong because of the because of the shape of the tank there. I'll have to try and remember to fix that. Okay, that says one year, thirty-two days. What does... yeah. Uh, okay, so... So this says we have a curve and escape. That says orbital period 1 year 32 days. Huh. Let me use RCS and bring it back down to just 1 year exactly. This escape is in 12 days. Okay, according to MechJed, this is a one-year orbit, or as close to it as I can get with the RCS. Uh, we still have an, an escape there. So the question is, which is right? Now, I'm sure you guys have had the experience, and I have too, of uh, approaching an escape, and it doesn't quite escape just yet. It can't quite decide whether it really should escape or not. It gets to T-0 on that counter and it's not quite sure but uh, that's a dodgy business and I'm gonna have to talk it over with Harden to see whether he's okay with uh, testing that escape right there the escape is in 12 days so supply wise he's okay he's uh, still got 328 days left but uh, getting back home might be a little bit trickier after we pass that point if if things go badly all right, so let me talk it over with Harden, and then we'll come back to you. All right, well, uh, he's he's okay with it. In fact, he's quite excited. So, so let's see what happens. Which is right, Kerbal Space Program itself or Mechjeb?